Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Go. Um, it's scary, I'm guessing, as a basketball player, to just sort of see that. So what was, I guess, your initial reaction? And then also, how do you think the team sort of handled that? As it uh, I think it's... Anytime you see, you know, one of your teammates go down, it's a, I think, a real level of concern. You know, we spend a lot of time around each other, you know, more than we would our family. So I think that was the number one thing. And then for it to be your best player, you know, the most important part of our team uh, at this point in the season, you just like, you know, it was like an oh shit moment, you know, especially because there was nobody else around. Um, and I was right next to him. So I just saw like kind of his, his facial expression, like his reaction. Um, so obviously I got scared. I knew he was going to call a timeout, so I just dribbled up to half court. And, um, you know, when he stood up, you know, I could tell he wanted to try to put weight on it, and I saw him put some weight on it. And um, it was like, I guess, the reaction of him doing that is what made him kind of like, you know, almost go back down. But he, I saw him put weight on it, so I was like, all right, it seemed stronger than what I was thinking. And, um, you know, to see him just be able to even walk off on his own, I think that, uh, that showed me a lot, you know, so obviously um, that was encouraging to see. And, um, you know, now you just uh, want them to get healthy. You know, we got to we gotta do what we got to do um, as a team to rally around him and can just continue to, to finish it out strong. And, um, you know, I think the, the good thing is we still got uh, the rest of this week and then, you know, we're going to have some, some time with the play-in games and, you um, you know, hopefully he'll, you know, he'll be able to heal during that time. But you know, right now we just gotta we gotta finish the job. You know, tonight was a great, um, a great win for us. Did, did he, he say anything before he left? No, I didn't. We came in. I, I haven't seen. Him. Uh, did, I guess. Yeah, just he didn't say nothing. Though. You saw him fall. You said he was right next to him. He held. Yeah, he fell. No, he didn't make no noise. He just once he went down, he just I saw his face. He was just kind of like, you know, just concerned. And when we called a timeout, I walked right up, and uh, he stood up, and I was standing next to him, and I saw him kind of, like, lean on it. And I could tell the reaction from, like, that pain. He kind of, like, it got weak. But I saw him put weight on it, and um, that was encouraging, like I said. I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about soleus injuries. but I, I did it last like, year. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, what does it feel like? That shit hurt. <laughs> it hurt. Um, and it, it makes sense that that's, you know, I think, when I did it, usually I'm able to um, walk things off. You know, I feel like my, I have a good high pain tolerance. And um, when I did it, I started to walk, and it wasn't that it was just that painful. It was like the muscle was just can't handle it, you know? So um, I think once it calmed down, you kind of figure out a way to kind of like limp around it, but it's, it's, it's a weird feeling. Um, but hearing that, I know, I, know, I know that feeling, you know? Um, and also, as somebody who experienced that, um, if that's what it is, you know, it's, that's also encouraging. Um, is, is that something that you can, like, rehab pretty quickly, or did you need to take some time before you could actually, like, do some stuff? Uh, when I did it, I, um, I strained my, my calf, and then I came back after, like, I would say probably, like, eight or nine days, I came back from the calf, and then, um, then I strained. Then I had this, the soleus injury, like right, like after I came back. I think it was like a game or two after I came back. I did my soleus, and then after that, it was like two weeks for me. It was like two weeks, and then um, I came back and played. What, um, what, you know, as Doc said, there's kind of a fog for the team, maybe in the arena, and yet able to push through that, hit buckets. And, and, and win this game and the game you, after four in a row, six to seven. So just what did you learn about, learn or what did you see from your, yourself and your guys to, to finish this off? Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it just shows who we are as a team. You know, um, I think the first couple of minutes, everybody was still a little bit stunned, like, you know, what just happened. Uh, but it's a, we got a, a vet team, an experienced team. And uh, like I told you after last game, like as as hard as a time as we've been having, you know, we got guys who really believe, and um, you just got to stay positive and you just got to keep pushing forward because you don't know when you're going to turn the corner. And um, 
I think sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. And uh, we was having a good game, and then something like that happens. You know, you see your best player go down, and you got to rally around him, and you got to not let the game slip away after that, you know, and after losing four games straight and six out of seven. It's like these are the kind of things you got to overcome to get out of a hole and to not just um, get off the hook and do it. You got to. You got to do something that's, that's going to challenge you, um, and you got to earn it so that you feel good about it and you can move forward in a, a positive way. And I think that's what this experience and then even the game tonight was for our team. You started 75 games this season. Um, Bob is a very good player. Yeah. And just what do you feel like changed about your guys' starting line and having him in the uh, I think, um, Obviously, I don't think it's a knock on on Bees. You know, like you said, he started 75 games. I think Bees has had a, a career year, um, and just where our team has been, you lose uh, a stretch of games. You know, games that we should win. We have a good game last game, let it slip. Um, and I've seen it just over the course of my career, where sometimes coaches just shake things up. You know, it doesn't mean it's permanent. It doesn't mean somebody did something wrong. Um, you just you just shake things up to just give get a team and and give things a different look and I think um, him throwing Pat Bev in there you know he's an instigator he's a a guy that plays with energy he has a certain you know disposition about him you know when he's on the floor and it kind of it brings a different dynamic to the starting lineup than what we've had and um, you know even if B started tonight we probably we might start the game the same way. Um, but there's no denying what, you know, the impact that Pat Bev had on the, the game tonight. Um, and that's that's what it takes to, to win. You know, um, everybody has to be okay with whatever is working best for our team at that time. And we got to be willing to sacrifice and be bought into whatever that looks like, even if it's um, at our own expense. So uh, I think that that's what it was. I thought Bees came in and gave us great minutes. You know, he hit, hit a three. He had a, a, a nice drive in the first half when they closed out. You know, he's chasing guys around. I mean, he he came in and played how he always played. He just didn't start the game. Um, and at this point in the season, I think it's whatever whatever it takes and whatever is asked of us, we got to be on board with doing it because it's a, a hell of an opportunity for us all. <clears throat> that first quarter was such a push. No need for a shot clock. You guys were taking a lot of threes. Was that? How you wanted to play against Boston, or is that just how you wanted to play? I mean, it was—I think you were shooting like eighty percent. I, I think it just was the emphasis on our pace. Uh, we played with great pace, you know, not just up and down the floor, but even once we got in the half court, just side to side, how we attacked the rim, how we cut, how we ran into screens. Everything was done with pace, but um, I think the number one thing is just making them miss. You know, when we not having to take the ball out the net, take it out slow the game down. We was getting it off the rim. We was getting deflections, getting steals. Um, and we was getting it and we was going. So we didn't play against a set defense the whole time. And I think that's when, when we getting stops and getting out, that's when we really see the weapons that we have. Um, you see Giannis out in transition. You see Chris play making the transition. You see the, the defense coming in and Brooke is spacing the floor and they can't stop Giannis and get out to Brooke. And then Chris has it on one side, Giannis in the pick and roll, and they loading up, and then it's a quick pass to me, and I get my first shot as a clean look at three. And then we, you know, it's so off balance because of our pace and how we're playing. The next time I come off pick and roll and nobody's there, I get another three, you know. So I think um, it started with us just uh, getting stops and rebounding the ball and being able to push it at them, and it, it just led to, you know, higher quality offense. This game set a record for fewest combined free throw attempts. Just how weird did it feel to? Be in the game where only one guy goes to the line the whole night for two free throws. Yeah, it was weird, but that seems to be the trend. You know, like fouls are not a part of the game no more. It's like, <laughs> you know, I've had um, times where I thought I was getting fouled, and then there's been other times where I was surprised the foul didn't get called on me, you know, where I might bump somebody or get a piece of somebody's arm and they don't call it. I'm like, man, they really letting us just play. Um, and then, you know, like the other night, I foul out with two minutes left in the game. I fouled out twice in like in our last five games or something like that. You know, I haven't fouled out and I don't know how long before this. So um, you just got to be, you just got to roll with however the game is going in tonight. It was, I don't, I hardly remember any whistles, you know, so. Uh, I have no idea how long Yon's going to be out, but I, there's a real chance that he's going to be 
stays out until whenever the playoffs start. Yeah. Um, we've asked you guys about this a lot, not getting a lot of time with a big three under Doc. How do you guys try to get ready in this week and a half with that being a real possibility that you guys might not have any more reps with the playoffs? Um, <clears throat> I said this uh, the other day. I don't think. It's not perfect, you know, and it's not going to be perfect. But I think we've shown in stretches and we've shown in uh, in games that it can it can be really good, you know, and we can dominate. And um, I think that usually happens against the best teams. You know, if you look at uh, the game against Oklahoma City, like we, we had it rolling. Um, even tonight we had it rolling, I think, against Denver, you know, the first time against Boston. So against the best teams, I think we um, – we really lean on each other, you know. We we exhaust, you know, the things with Giannis and then with Chris and then me. Like we just kind of play in that naturally uh, because we know that we need to do that to take advantage of these good teams. And um, I think sometimes when playing against teams that aren't on the level of a Boston or a Denver or Oklahoma City, um, we see opportunity in other things. So we don't just kind of we don't play the same way. You know, I don't think it's as natural. But um, when it comes down to it and when we get into the playoffs, I think we'll be able to we'll be able to put it together, and it won't be perfect then. But I think um, uh, it'll it'll be more simple. You know, I think playoff games are aren't as fast paced. It's more half court possessions. It's more execution and thinking and being able to uh, get to the things we want to get to. And I think that'll also help us out. Um, but it, it is what it is. You know, is we got we got enough, and I think that's a, a good problem to have. It's a tough question to ask. You guys had such a big lead early, but generally speaking, how different can you play when you have a lead, maybe after three quarters or whatever? Does it change? Does it not matter this team is so good? Or does it change not only rotation subs, but what you want to do, what you might gamble with defensively? I don't think we need it. I, I think our problem in some games where we kind of let teams back into the game or uh, we lose leads and stuff like that is not playing the same. Um, it doesn't mean that we play in a hurry and take quick shots and, you know, we play sped up. But, you know, our pace and um, doing the things that we do, you know, how, how we run the floor for each other, um, sprinting into screens, rolling hard, uh, pulling behind, giving guys outlets. Um, west side, west side, west side. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. Hey. We on the top, woo, woo, we on the top. We on the top, woo, woo. we on the top, woo, woo. had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Go and split the pie, never stop, woo, woo.